Hello, and thank you for listening in to learn more about the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's proposed regulation changes for redfish. This presentation provides background about the new management approach for redfish and provides an overview of our evaluation of the redfish fishery within the proposed Panhandle region. As you may have heard, FWC is proposing several redfish regulation changes, and we would like to hear your feedback. This virtual presentation will provide an overview of the new redfish management process and the information used to develop the proposed rules. We'll also let you know how you can provide comments on the proposed changes. Redfish is one of Florida's most iconic and popular recreational fisheries. However, over the past few years, FWC has heard a variety of concerns about this fishery. To address these concerns, we're implementing a new management approach that incorporates a holistic review of ecological and human factors to evaluate the fishery on a finer regional scale. To implement this new management approach, FWC is proposing to create nine management regions. This will allow greater flexibility for addressing smaller scale issues, concerns, and preferences. FWC used six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each of these proposed management regions. The results of these evaluations, as well as stakeholder feedback, were used to inform the proposed regulation changes we'll discuss in this presentation. Throughout the development of the new redfish management approach and the proposed regulations, FWC staff has used a variety of approaches to gather stakeholder feedback. Stakeholder input is a critical component of fisheries management. Public engagement included an angler satisfaction survey, the first ever redfish summit, public workshops, and public comment opportunities at commission meetings. The public workshops on the proposed rule changes are a continuation of our public engagement efforts to ensure that those interested in the management of redfish have the opportunity for their opinion to be heard. As stated earlier, FWC is implementing a new holistic management approach to incorporate regional differences in environmental and human factors into the management of redfish. This requires the establishment of the nine proposed regions shown on the map. These proposed management regions were designed based on differences in habitat characteristics, identifiable geographic boundaries, stock assessment regions, and stakeholder and FWC law enforcement feedback. Establishing smaller regions would allow greater flexibility to address local issues. Using feedback from previous stakeholder engagement, FWC selected six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each region. These metrics include escapement, harmful algal blooms, stakeholder feedback, fishing effort, habitat trends, and relative abundance. Before getting into the management metrics, I would first like to describe the boundaries of the proposed Panhandle region using the map on the slide. The western boundary is located at the Florida-Alabama border, and the region extends east to Alligator Point, which is near the border of Wakulla and Franklin counties. The proposed Panhandle region does not include all waters of the Oclockney Bay, the Oclockney River, and its tributaries. We evaluated the redfish fishery in the proposed Panhandle region using the new management metrics. A summary of this evaluation is captured in our new annual reviews. Data used for each metric are collected from a variety of partners. Each region will be evaluated annually with the most recent available data. To access this annual review and the annual reviews for the other regions, visit myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash recreational slash res dash drum slash. Over the next few slides, we will take a deeper dive into the evaluation and highlight some of the metric evaluation results FWC considered when developing the proposed regulations. The first metric is escapement, which was originally the only metric previously used to evaluate the redfish fishery. Escapement evaluates the impacts of fishing by estimating the percentage of fish surviving through the slot limit compared to an unfished population. The current escapement target is 40%, which provides a buffer over the 20% sustainability limit that enables the stock to be resilient to unexpected events. Escapement is estimated by the stock assessment, which is updated every four to six years. The stock assessment calculates escapement for all of Northwest Florida, which includes the proposed Panhandle and Big Bend regions. The long-term escapement trend for that larger region has declined since the early 1990s, 
but has remained above the management target. The next metric is harmful algal bloom frequency and duration, specifically for red tide. Red tide releases neurotoxins that can kill marine life, including redfish. Red tide data are routinely collected statewide by FWC and roughly 60 partners. Red tide does occur in the Panhandle region, but at a relatively low frequency compared to other parts of the state. Over the past 20 years in the Panhandle region, the average bloom duration at concentrations that could impact fish species was three months on average. An important component of fisheries management is stakeholder feedback, which is the next metric used to assess redfish. One of the ways we collected public feedback was through an angler satisfaction survey of recreational license holders and charter captains. We are going to repeat the survey every two to three years. Results from the 2021 survey indicated that respondents from the Panhandle region had high satisfaction with their recent fishing experience compared to the rest of the state. The majority of recreational anglers had high satisfaction and rated their recent fishing experience as fair or good. Responses from for hire captains were evenly split between positive and negative ratings of their recent fishing experience. An overview of the response to this question from the Panhandle region is shown in the pie charts on the slide. Once the proposed regulations were announced, we did not receive many responses from the stakeholders within this proposed region. The feedback that staff has received was in support of maintaining the bag limit at one fish per person. There were also suggestions to lower the vessel limit below the proposed four fish per vessel. Fishing effort and landings are important characterizations of a fishery, and for this reason is the next metric. Fishing effort and landings information is collected by NOAA's Fisheries Marine Recreational Information Program. This program uses information gathered from anglers to estimate the landings, releases, and effort for recreationally targeted marine fish species. Fishing effort in the Panhandle region has more than doubled since the late 1990s and has remained relatively stable in the past decade. However, there has been a recent decline in fishing effort and total catch since 2019. FWC will be closely monitoring fishing effort and total catch trends for this region as new information becomes available. Habitat is critical to all fish species and therefore is another metric being used to evaluate the redfish fishery. Specifically, we examine the extent of seagrass, salt marsh, and mangroves because these habitats are essential for redfish foraging and refuge. We acquired habitat data from over 50 different collaborators throughout Florida and evaluated the change in acreage of each habitat over time for each region. The seagrass extent within this region has shown recent increases in the western portions of the region, as shown in the map. However, there has been recent and long-term local decrease in seagrass extent within St. Joseph Bay and long-term decrease within Perdido Bay. Saltwater marsh area has been relatively stable over time and has increased relative to the late 1980s and early 1990s. Mangrove swamp is present in this region but the extent of it is not large enough to function ecologically. The last metric, relative abundance, can inform how a fish population responds to different ecological stressors, such as extreme weather events and changing environmental conditions. FWC's Fisheries Independent Monitoring Program, often referred to as FIM, conducts sampling in several estuaries around the state. The data from this sampling are used to develop relative abundance trends for redfish that are less than a year old. These fish are also called young of year and legal sized redfish. FIM sampling within the Panhandle region is conducted in Apalachicola Bay. The top graph represents young of year sampled using river set nets. The young of year graph shows how young of year abundance increased in 2016 and has remained relatively stable since then. The bottom graph, which shows legal sized redfish abundance, has increased over time. The abundance in 2020, the last year in the time series, was the highest since 2013. All of the information I just went over was used to inform the proposed regulation changes. But before I get to the proposal, I want to make sure you are aware of the current regulations. There are currently three management regions shown in the map on the slide. In the Northwest and South management regions, anglers are limited to a one fish bag limit for redfish. In the Northeast management region, the bag limit is two fish. 
Statewide, the only gear that are allowed to be used to harvest redfish are hook and line and cast nets. The slot size limit includes an 18-inch minimum and 27-inch maximum. In addition to the bag limit, there are vessel and transport limits. Regardless of the number of people on a vessel, no more than eight redfish may be on board. When in transit on land, no person may transport more than six fish. Captain and crew are allowed to maintain a personal bag limit when on a for hire trip. Commercial harvest from Florida state waters and all harvests from federal waters are prohibited. There are also temporary regulations in effect for a portion of Southwest Florida put in place following a severe multi-year red tide that make redfish catch and release only through August 31st, 2022. Using the new management approach, we are proposing some regulation changes that will impact the highlighted regulation. Here are the proposed rule changes that would impact the Panhandle region. First would be the establishment of the Panhandle region. Within this region, FWC proposed to maintain the daily bag limit to one fish per person and decrease the vessel limit to four fish. The proposed statewide rule changes would prohibit captain and crew from retaining a bag limit when on a for hire trip and reduce the transport limit to four fish per person. These proposed regulations were developed using stakeholder feedback and by evaluating the redfish fishery using the management metrics that we covered during this presentation. We'd like your input on the proposed regulations and any suggestions you have for management. We are interested in all feedback, but most importantly, we'd like to know why you would support or oppose the proposed regulations. Let us know what you think by visiting myfwc.com slash saltwatercommons and leave us a comment. Please make sure to select redfish as a topic when filling out the form. Before concluding, I'd like to provide you some information on our public engagement efforts in June 2022 and what's up next. FWC held 12 in-person workshops throughout Florida in June 2022. The locations of the workshops are indicated by the stars in the map. This recording is one of nine presentations that was created for each management region, which can be found on our website, myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash rulemaking slash workshops. Staff will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on the new management approach and the proposed regulations. If you're interested in coordinating a small group meeting, contact staff by email at marine at myfwc.com. As mentioned, we are also gathering public comment online through our Saltwater Commons page. Please visit myfwc.com slash saltwatercommons to submit a comment. After gathering feedback, staff will present the final rule recommendations and public comment to the Commission. This is currently scheduled for the July 2022 Commission meeting. That concludes this presentation and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen in. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact staff at marine at myfwc.com.